Welcome to Liesl's Artistic Studio. So today I'm actually doing something a little different. As you are all aware by now, I have been collaborating with the craft -O -O Brush Company and have designed my very own set of specialty watercolor brushes. And now that the brushes are exactly how I like, the next step to getting these ready for production is designing and painting the box cover as well as the inside flap for the brushes to be sold in. So today I thought I'd give you a quick sneak peek and some inside information on my efforts to creating this and hopefully give you some painting tips along the way as well. But don't worry, next week we'll be back to my instructional painting tutorials that you can paint along with me. So first off, I had to pick sort of the shape and approximate size to create this. Horizontal facing seems to make the most sense for brushes to be packaged in. Then next up is coming up with the design. Now this is the fun part, but also difficult because the possibilities are endless. However, because I love painting florals and teach mostly flower paintings on my channel, that seemed to be the most appropriate. Now the question is, what flower do I feature? I mean, there's a bazillion flowers. Which one do I pick? I finally decided on a rose. It's beautiful, it's classic, it's well-loved and well-known, and it will also allow for details and intricate types of painting, which is my absolute favorite style. The drawing took some time to get it just right, and I did not film the entire dragged out process of that, but I was pretty happy with the final drawing. Now, it may be hard for you to see because I drew it very lightly on my paper so the pencil lines wouldn't show too much in the end. Now time for the best part, but also in a way the most stressful part because I wanted it to turn out so perfectly, the painting of this outline. So something fun about this is that I designed this cover in a way that I will actually be able to use almost every, if not all, of the brushes from inside my set. I've given a few sneak peeks of some of these brushes in recent tutorials. So the five brushes in my set include a large number 10 round. This is one of my absolute favorites. I've also got a number six more medium sized round and a number three small round. These all work fantastically and have amazingly pointy tips. Then I wanted to also include an angle brush in this set. I find that I can paint some of the simplest and easiest leaves, flowers, and petals using an angle brush. In fact, in my tutorial next week, I will be showing you how easy it can be to paint a hydrangea flower using this brush. I'm very excited to share that with you. Then for my last brush, I've got a nice thin number one rigger brush, perfect for thin lines, grasses, stems, leaf veins, etc. Now, I do plan to create a tutorial diving into the specifics of each of these brushes a little more, the strokes they can make, and how each one of them can be used. So keep an eye out for that in the near future. And keep in mind, I only have a limited number of these sets to be sold. So if you're at all interested in purchasing one when they come out, I do actually have a link in the description of this video that will take you to my Craftimo brush product page. And then when you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a big orange button that you can click on so you can be notified as soon as these brushes are available for purchase. Then if you scroll down just a little bit more, you can actually read my about the artist paragraph also. It's just kind of fun if you'd like to get to know me a little bit better. There are also a few other details about the brushes themselves. So there you go. All right, the next big decision I needed to make for this brush box, what colors do I use? I obviously want the colors to match or look good with the brushes themselves. So in the end, I decided to keep a white background and use pink for the roses with green leaves, some of which you'll notice later have a black or gray undertone to tie in with the colors of the bristles that I picked for the brushes. And then later I will add in some splatter accents of these same colors as well. So the first thing I decided to tackle painting is the large detailed main rose that is the focal point for this piece. I've got three shades of pink on my palette and usually a good rule of thumb when painting roses is to keep the very center of the rose the darkest in value and then gradually get lighter and lighter as you move to the larger petals on the outside of the flower. I find it's also important to have sections of lighter or even white spaces here and there on the flower, especially where a petal may be curled or folded just to give this extra dimension and contrast. 
I usually like to use the wet on wet technique for flower petals because it allows the different colors or values of colors to spread and blend so softly and delicately with each other. Now, this piece being so intricate and detailed took me many hours to complete, so I'm not going to be posting this entire process. I will skip around and speed things up so you won't have to take much time watching it, but I hope you enjoy catching a little glimpse of the process here. I was pretty pleased with the way this main rose turned out. There's a good balance of light and dark. It is cohesive. It blends well together as one lovely flower. But at the same time, if you look closer, you can see the details and differences of each and every petal. Now I'll paint this side facing rose in a similar way, but I really want the focus and shining point of this piece to be on the first flower. Having this one turn to the side really helps with that for this composition because your eyes are naturally more drawn to the open flower. In a way, it's almost created a target or a bullseye, which will draw you back to it. I'll add a variety of green colors to my tray now, but before I dive into painting the greenery and leaves, I'll paint the little buds next, letting the pink and the green gently blend into each other. I've used the round brushes on the roses and I could use them on the leaves as well, but let's have some fun and I'll show you how awesome an angle brush can be to paint in leaves. Because this has got a nice flat broad edge, you really can cover a good space of the leaf with just one or two strokes. But you can also rotate the brush during the stroke and get some nice thin tips on the leaf as well. I'll teach you this in greater detail another day when you can paint along with me. After I add the little greenery stemming out from the base of this side facing rose, the next step is to add in some splatters. I chose to make them a little more controlled in their appearance though, and maybe even later connect some of them together with some thin stem lines or branches so they look more like splashes of loose accent flowers in the background. The trick with these was to not make them too dark or have too many of them. I didn't want to distract from the main picture. They needed to stay an accent. I also felt like it was important here to, again, tie in the gray or black color to really make this cohesive with the brushes themselves. For my finishing touch, I have pulled out the rigger brush now to paint in some thin branches and stems on some of those splatters, as well as some thin center vein lines on the leaves.
And that completes my brush box cover. I actually painted a second picture using the same theme, colors, and style to put on the inside of the box flap as well. I just didn't record the process of that one. But I hope you liked this. I think it will really finish off and beautify this lovely brush set. Again, make sure you click the button in the video description so you can be notified when these are available. And don't forget to subscribe so you can paint along with me next week. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch today. Take care, my friends.